What is a video with a bad audio? I want to live with audio. I think this boy been smoking something. Crappy, right? I, Sam, I can handle a crappy video, but with an excellent audio, if you know what I mean. In this video, I'll be sharing with you how I like to prepare my audio as I review the audio settings of the EOS R6. After taking the settings, I'll record the sound. I will also share my screen with you to show you how I make it sound professional in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hmm. Sounds like a good rhyme, right? It starts <laughs> right now. Hey Sam here, welcome to my channel. I am not your typical tutor. I am a hobbyist who is interested in videography and film. So what I use in terms of softwares and gear here in this channel, I simply just share with you, hoping that you can learn a thing or two from it. If you find this interesting, I'd like you to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any updates. Without any further ado, let's hit the road. So I'm going to be connecting my microphone straight into the camera. The first thing I do before I hit the record button is I change from the default settings of the EOS R6 to manual. You want to try this out. It is very interesting. The way this thing comes out really sounds good. We hit the menu button right here. It will bring us to the red page, which is the page number one for the EOS R6. We scroll down to sound recording. By default, you're going to probably meet it on auto recording and so click on that auto sound recording and then go down to manual as you can see right there and click on manual once on manual you want to scroll down to recording level rec level for recording so you click on there you're probably going to meet this bar here in the middle now what you want to do is to reduce it all the way down here I'll explain in a second why you need to do that. Bring it down here to that level. If you leave it in the mid section of that bar, you're going to have a lot of distortion or you're going to have a lot of clipping in your sound. Clipping actually happens when sound goes beyond its maximum threshold. So you reduce it there and click OK. So this is a very safe place. And for this wind attenuator, I hope I pronounced that well, wind filter. I rarely use the attenuator because I hardly do outdoor recording. If you're the type that does a lot of vlogging and all that, you might want to activate that but I still put it anyway. So you come here. I already have mine enabled, so I don't need to do it again. If you haven't enabled it, if you're just seeing it for the first time, you probably are, are going to see um, enable, not disable, because if I hit that button now, it's going to disable it, you know, but I don't want to disable it as you can see. So you click on enable. So to go back, we simply hit menu to go back to the front page. The reason I do this is because it allows me a level of flexibility to tweak its settings to whatever it is I like, you know, before I hit that record button. This is just to show you behind the scenes stuff, okay? If you see back there, there is like a duvet. I drape it on a stand. Basically what that's supposed to do is to just uh, help the effect of sound, you know. It is insulated drywall here. So sound bounces off the drywall and then that creates echo. So the way I stop that from happening is by draping that thing on the stand, as you can see. You can get tub, I think it's called tub, the thing you can use to pack stuff when you're moving houses or something. You know, it's blue, you know, it's very inexpensive. So drape it all over. You are talking and the microphone is right in front of you. So you make, you put it behind the camera so that, you know, it will absorb some sound and prevent your sound to bounce off the drywall. So that's like an extra tip. I hope this helps some. The sound of your voice is unique and peculiar that the world would love to hear it. Check this out. The sound of your voice is unique and peculiar that the world would love to hear it. So the next thing I do inside of Premiere Pro to clean up my sound is working so hard to get you to smack that like button or poke the subscribe. 
thank you i have already loaded the item into my timeline here so it already sounds good okay. we're just going to take a few specific steps for me to clean up my sound and this is how i do it now i come here i'll duplicate this particular clip here so that we have a point of reference so when it's all said and done and i have tweaked this sound i would play back the two of them and you know, so that we can compare so basically the things i need i'm going to be needing amplify amplify will help me boost the volume i come up here i click on effect control now it's going to be pretty easy here make sure audio clip is selected i come to this effect control panel here now down here i click on effect and then i come here and search for amplify so i simply pick that amplify and drop it in my clip so the next thing i want to bring onto it i simply just click and drop the mastering in the clip parametric eq i do bass boost the low frequency a little bit do single band compression it's now time to now start to put all the effect in place so this is what i do it's very simple the first thing is i come here i click on the tab right we heard the, the sound a while ago how it sounds so we've, we've heard the raw thing so i come here i click on that spot right there i increase it to 8 db now this is dependent on the level of your sound from out of camera the value i use i use between 7 and 8 at most 9 db the next thing you want to go for is mastering right the reason i amplify is so that i will give the audio a consistent level from beginning to end okay the next thing i want to do is i go to mastering now while on mastering i simply just just go to here activate a preset called make room for vocals i click on it now you see this uh, waveform changes or the curves changes so um i just leave it at that and then close it up the next i want to activate is is parametric eq now here is where the work is pay attention to this i simply come in here and activate another preset called loudness maximizer i click on it so it will change the curve right here now take note that the left hand side is the low frequency and the right hand side is the high frequency in the middle here is the middle frequency in between the high and the low so what i do is i simply click on these two here so that it will give me another spot right in the middle now the thing i want to just do with this is i want to be able to control some of the levels you know within the middle and it does apply a bit of compression to my sound so i play it right here so that we can hear of your voice is unique and peculiar so on the lower on the low axis i boost the bass just a little bit i'm a dude i need to sound like a dude ladies might not need this so i boost the the bass a little bit now you don't want to do too much on this axis if i push anything on the high frequency it's going to start picking and you don't want that you know so if i play this right here is unique and peculiar that the, that the world i like how that sounds i'm just going to control the mid session right here this is unique and peculiar that the world would love to hear it so as you can see i like what i hear i am fine with that i'll just leave the bass as, as it is right now so if you notice i have a bit of a v curve here so that's basically what you need to achieve you know is not much you know you just pull it down a little bit and that is going to make the the audio sound better the next thing we're going to do is bass here on bass i don't apply any preset so i just go here and uh, apply two decibels i just increase it to two or 2.5 let's check it no two audios are the same i think i am satisfied with that base maybe we should give it a little bit more uh, say three d three db sound of your voice is unique and peculiar that the world the next thing i'll do right now is going to be single band compression and i just compressed all that sound and round it up you know just to give it that contained feel of sound you know as you can see i simply just open it up single band compression 
I go to the preset here and go for voiceover. So when I activate that, you hear it, it gives it a little bit of what I call cosmetic umph. <laughs> So the last thing I do finally, finally is we come back to the search engine here and then I type in denoise. This is the one here. I simply pick it and put it on my clip. So once I do that, let's crank it open right here. So you're going to see the waveform for this signal. So let me quickly talk about the noise. The reason why I'm using the noise is all of these steps that I have followed through have actually boost the ambient noise level in the room. That noise usually is the noise that I don't like. If microphone during recording picked all kinds of signals from the room and those are called ambient noise. Basically, you want to find a way to reduce them in a way to the barest minimum. They are never going to completely really go. You know, so um, as I was boosting, amplifying the audio, it's going to pick some of that noise level up. So some of that noise level is going to come up. So once I finish doing the effect and all the cleaning and all that, it is ideal that I actually now denoise my clip so that I reduce that unwanted noise to the barest minimum. I hope you understand that. So basically this audio is ready. My bread is baked, it's well cooked, it's delicious. In my opinion, I love the way it sounds, you know. I used to actually record separately into another device then, you know, go and clean it up in post-production. Now I can actually do everything within Adobe Premiere Pro. The, the video that I have up here will show you how to do this, recording it separately and then uploading it to Adobe Audition where you can begin to clean it up and make it sound professional. That video is still very useful. I still do that, but I just want to be able to cut short the process that I put into recording my audio, you know, for my YouTube channel. When I'm going to do any professional work that is not me standing in the in front of the camera, I go the other recording route. Then I make the EOS R6 record a backup. And I do hope you benefited a lot from here in, you know, if not, you know, leave me a comment, you know, I'd like to learn from you too. If there's something you do differently during the course of your recording, especially using the EOS R6, I'd like you to put them in the comments so that we can interact and make this community more of interaction. And please, if you do have anything you want me to talk about as far as the EOS R6 is concerned, or could be any other gear, um, something you, you don't quite understand, please, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I would respond to you. Don't forget, the best time to create is now. Until another video, this is Sam, and I am signing out right now. Peace. Ooh,